That was good, amen? It's a holy moment. When God is in our midst and He speaks to us, it's so very good. So very good. Huh. Kind of hard to transition from that, and uh, I don't necessarily want to. We're in our message series, Spiritual Revival, Praise and Worship. Had I thought about it, I'd have given a sexier name like Sacred Songs or something, but Praise and Worship, it is what it is here. You, 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 you get what you see in this church. I'm a little wrecked right now, so I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little wrecked. I'm trying to recover. I'm trying to recover just a little bit. Hey, last week, if you weren't here last week, uh, did you get anything out of last week? Did you get anything out of the message? Just, just help me out. Yes? 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 La- last week, yeah. Yeah. La- last week, we, um, we read about how Paul authored the book of Philippians. We, we read about um, uh, that, that uh, in, in uh, Acts 16, Paul was in Philippi. And while he was in Philippi, uh, he was teaching, and uh, he set a slave girl free. Uh, and because he set this slave girl free, he was put in prison. Uh, but about midnight, uh, he was uh, singing along with Silas, praise and worship to God. And there was an earth shake, and all of the gates were open, and everybody was set free in the prison. Now, I know Mike gave a really great testimony about a guy who's been in jail 25 years, got $100. He'd probably like an earthquake that set him free. Amen? I mean, that would be, that would be an even better gift. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I'm going to need you to help me out a little bit today. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so Paul and Silas were there, and the prison was open. And we talked about the paradox of the fact that Paul and Silas could, pray, could sing their way out of prison, and yet and still, he wrote the book of Philippians while in a jail cell. He could not get out of through prayer and worship. Uh, and, um, and we talked last week about how not every day is an Acts 16 day. Do you remember that? We talked about not every day is an Acts 16 day. And as Christians, we, we have to be prepared for the long haul. And we have to be prepared that not every day uh, are we going to sing our way out of our bondage. Can you say amen? And so as I was preparing my message this week, I had a message all planned in, in mind, and the Lord arrested me. And the Lord stopped me, and uh, as I was trying to write my message, I write my message on Monday, and uh, I'd spent a good four or five hours in prayer trying to uh, put together my message, and I finally said, okay, God, what's going on? And, and he stopped me, and he said, what was your message last week? I said, not every day is an Acts 16 day. He said, but some days are. I think, I think you need to hear that. Some days are in Acts 16 day. Today, we're going to talk about how some days are in Acts 16 day. Can you say amen? Yeah. Title of my message today is Breakthrough Worship. Breakthrough Worship. Wow. And what's going to happen is I'm going to talk briefly in the worship team. Some people are going to come up here and sing, and we're going to see breakthrough happen again. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah, no, no. One class, we all clap. Come on, let's go. See, worship, worship is an event. Worship is a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a supernatural thing that happens on earth. Let's look at Acts chapter 16. In Acts chapter 16, he says, you know, Paul and Silas were in jail, wrongly prisoned, beaten, chained, their feet were in stocks. It says about midnight, say midnight. Midnight. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. You you don't know who's hearing your praise right now. You know that, right? (laughs) Sometimes you're you're in worship, and something gets on you, and you're like, I don't know, I don't know what got on me just now, but because there's somebody in chains that's watching your worship, that's going to bring them breakthrough. See, I worship for freedom, not just mine. If it's just about you, this is going to be a very frustrating Christianity. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, see, so many people are afraid someone's going to hear them praying or singing, and so they stop. The Bible says this on purpose. 
and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly, say suddenly. suddenly. When you see that word in the Bible, it's important. Because the suddenly is part of the growth plan of God. We think, you know, things go linear and they don't. It's like this and then suddenly. God's like, today I promote you. And we're expecting gradual promotion. And suddenly. When you're at work and you want a promotion, it's not like they pay you a, you know, an extra 50 cents a day until you get up to the new promotion. One day you're making one wage and the next day you're promoted. Right? And so in the kingdom, yeah, no, that's good. And so in the kingdom, we just do the job, and then suddenly we get promoted. We're like, oh, look at this. I have freedom where I didn't have freedom before. I'm sorry. Let me finish this scripture right here. Verse 26. And suddenly, there... Ha. And suddenly. Ha. There came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were unfastened. Did you see whose chains were unfastened? The people who were listening to the breakthrough worship. No, if we're all going to, one's going to clap, we're all going to clap. Come on. I feel like it's a good word. The devil makes you so scared to share your testimony. He makes you so scared. Why? Why does the enemy work so hard to keep you from sharing what God has done in your life? Because anybody else who hears it can have it. Hear me. Some days are Acts 16 days, and those people needed a grid for what God was about to do. Some days are an Acts 16 day. See, we don't just sing songs in this church. Come on, let it go. We don't just sing songs here. Worship. Put it up. Worship is a, it's a, it's an event. It's a supernatural encounter with God. Worship is an event. It's a supernatural encounter with God. We don't just sing songs. I understand that's a good place to start. It's a good place to start singing songs. Singing songs is a good place to start. But that can't be the end. That can't be the goal. The goal can't just be sing. The goal has to be a supernatural encounter with God. And sometimes that takes us a little longer than other times. We want our worship team to come up here already encountering God. But sometimes it takes a little time for us to catch up with them. And sometimes it takes a a little time for them to catch up with the Holy Ghost. And so sometimes we guys let it go a little bit long because we need to encounter God more than we need to just sing songs. Amen? Amen? I have this thing where like, if once I see something in the Bible, I believe I can have it. Once I see something in the spirit, I can have it. Period. I have to be careful of who I listen to uh, and who I allow to influence me because I want God to show things to me that I can have. And, 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 and I'm so uh, sensitive spiritually that if I allow myself to watch and listen to the wrong things, I'll get a counterfeit. Because I won't get a promise for me. I'll see a promise for someone else. I'll try to get what someone else got instead of what God has for me. And so I try to read the Bible prophetically, listening for what God has for me. And once I see God has something for me, I know it's for me. It's settled. Once God shows me something in the spirit, I know it's for me. It's settled. I just, it's just, I know. I know that I know that I know. Sometimes I wonder why it's taking a little longer, but I just, I just, I just know. And so when I read the Bible, I don't, I'm not confused about who God is and what I can have. When I encounter spiritual beings, I know I'm encountering something real. To me, it's not like, did I wonder that? Did I imagine that? It showed up for a reason. It showed up for a reason. Hallelujah. But in order to receive what God has for us, we have to meet the requirements. And that's the, that's the Christianity that we kind of went against last week. This Christianity that says you can have something for nothing that would be foreign to Paul and foreign to Jesus. So this, this Christianity that says it's going to be all rainbows and skittles and no times of trial. Actually, we have to persevere in times of trial. There is actually going to be people who are going to try to stop our witness. There is going to be times where it feels like the word is, world is against us, but it doesn't, the world has always been against us. There's just times we've been in grace, we didn't recognize it. Yeah. Yeah. 
In the Second Chronicles, um, it tells the story of um, of of uh, Solomon rebuilding the temple. I know you know the story. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go through the entire thing, but Solomon had to build the temple exactly according to God's plan. He couldn't just come up with whatever he thought was in style. He needed to build a temple according to God's plan. David wanted to build a temple. His dad, David, and and God said, "No, you can't build it." Uh, and uh, have you ever wanted to do something for God and God said, "No, you can't do it." You're like, I'm ready to go do that. Nope. And you're like, no, 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 but I'm, I'll, be, I'll be really good at it. He's like, yeah, that's awesome. No. <laughs> you know, when F- Paul wrote Acts 16, he wasn't trying to go to Philippi. That wasn't even his goal. He's trying to go to Asia. There was like, he, there's just like a, if you read the chapter, there's a list of places he tried to go, and the Holy Ghost was like, nope. He's like, we're going to go preach here. And the Holy Spirit was like, nope. We're going to go there. And the Spirit wouldn't allow us. Finally, someone from Macedonia came and visited me. An angel from Macedonia came and visited and said, come help. He got there, wound up in jail. I, I, I don't want to tell you there's a jail cell waiting for you. That, that's not the point of this message. But I wouldn't mind singing my way out of a jail cell and people talking about it 2,000 years from now. But what I want to tell you is David had a heart to build a temple for God, and God said no. And David said, fine, I, I, I may not build that temple, but what I will do is I will sow into who will build that temple. And so he started storing up all the building materials. Now, I'm, I, just, I just feel like there's such a prophetic flow in this house today. I'm going to really struggle to get my message done on time. I'm going to do it, but there's such a prophetic flow. I, I just got to tell you, some of you are just like burning in your heart that there's something you're supposed to be doing. And in this season, for whatever reason, God's saying no, but that doesn't mean you're not supposed to be sowing into it for someone else. Oh, I'm supposed to be a worship leader, you know, leading worship around the world, but God has not released me yet. Well, why don't you pay for some studio time for somebody else? Why don't you go ahead and support somebody else's ministry? I'm supposed to be a, a preacher, whoever. Well, why don't you send an offering to somebody who is doing that? Why don't you store up some, some resource for somebody who is doing that? Why don't you begin to collect? And, and I just got to gotta tell some people that you're not done it yet because you're not prepared yet. And instead of waiting for God to send you to get prepared, start studying and preparing right now. If you're a business, you feel like you're supposed to lead a business one day, like you are supposed to own a business, start visiting local businesses and supporting them. Like God's going to stay, I'm going to start a, a lawn care, so I don't know, it's not a good, it's not a good example. I want to sell a widget, I don't know, whatever. That doesn't work for my, I appreciate you though, appreciate you though. I'm just going to use Brandon. Brandon wants his starting a video in, in photography service with his wife. We believe in the Lord to bless it greatly, right? He's got a YouTube channel, starting to grow, bless the Lord. But if you want local people to visit your business, then you might want to start visiting local businesses. Sow into the local economy so there's something for you to feed from later. Instead of just looking for the cheapest price online... Does this, are you, is this making sense? Like, what you do with your money matters. Yeah. What you do with your resources matters. And if there's something from the local economy you're trying to gain, stop trying to save a dollar by buying something from China or saving a dollar fifty from Amazon. Go ahead and go down to True Value here in Boca Raton and buy something and support the local economy that you want to actually live off of one day. Does this make sense? We got to be doing things prophetically, kingdom minded. We, gotta, we, can't, we can't allow our city to go broke and then wonder why we're not getting paid more. I feel like that's a good word. And so David couldn't build the temple, so he said, well, if I can't build it, I'll just buy everything they need for it. And so he started storing up supplies. He's like, that, that, that temple's going to have my name all over it. He's like, you're not going to be able to look at nothing in that place without seeing me. So he started storing up supplies, and then in time, uh, you know, he built a tent for the ark. And they worship before the ark in the tent, right? And, uh, and, and in time, Solomon was raised up, and Solomon built a beautiful temple for the Lord. And, and uh, he got all the things from the tent of David, the tabernacle of David, and brought it into the temple that Solomon had built. 
And uh, he brought the ark in, and they sacrificed so many animals. They said they, they could not count the animals. So many were sacrificed. And they put the altar, the ark, in the holy place right where it was supposed to be, sacrificed the animals, and nothing happened. Absolutely nothing happened. You see, just showing up is not enough. Write this down. God is expecting worship. Amen. Psalm 22, 3 says, You are holy, O you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. God is expecting worship. You see, praise, praise is a, is a, is a physical expression. It's a it's a, it's a physical manifestation of spiritual attitudes. It, it, it's an inner response of the heart to a revelation of God and His greatness. Praise is physical. It's not mental. It's physical. And, 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 and there's a physical action that's manifested from a heart of praise. Praise. Praise, hear me, is something we do. Say it with me. Praise is something we do. You have to actually do praise. It includes making a show. It, it, it includes celebrating. It includes glorying in and raving about. And, and it, it includes playing instruments. And it includes raising your hands. And it includes kneeling. And it includes laying on your face at times. And it includes maybe you're walking and you're running. Maybe you run around the room. Praise is a physical expression of a heart condition. It's where you make your body an instrument of praise. God told me this this morning in my devotions as I was just talking to God. He said, tell people this. He said, he said this is what he said. I want to read to you. He says, he says, when you make your body an instrument of praise, I will make your life praiseworthy. Come on. When you make your body an instrument of praise, I I will make your life praise worthy. And it's all over the psalm. Psalm 113.1. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 134, 1 and 2. Behold, bless the Lord, all the servants of the Lord, who serve by night in the house of the Lord. Watch this. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. There's a physical aspect of praise. Psalm 28, 7. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. Therefore, my heart exalts and with my song, I shall thank him. Are, are you listening? God is expecting worship. So they build this temple, and they get the ark, and they put it in the temple. Then Solomon gets the priests, sacrificed so many animals they couldn't count them, right? Second Chronicles 5.13. Then in unison, the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice to praise and to glorify the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice, accompanied by trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music, and when they praised the Lord, saying, He is indeed, He indeed is good, for His loving kindness is everlasting. Watch this. Then, then the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud. It, it wasn't the ark. It wasn't the temple. It wasn't the symbols. It was when, come on, no, no, come on, come on, come on. It's when they began praising. When the people began praising, the house was filled with a cloud. H have you heard a story like this before? Have you heard a prayer meeting like this before? Remember in Acts chapter 2, he says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly, say suddenly, there came a from heaven a noise, a violent rushing wind, and the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared tongues of fire distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them 
utterance. This is not a new thing. It's not a Pentecostal thing. It's not a a charismatic thing. This is a God thing. This is what church is supposed to look like. This is what worship is supposed to look like. This is what God thought of when he created worship. This is how God responds to worship. Again, this isn't a revival life thing. It's not a, you know, a new charismatic move. You guys do this, but we don't. No, no. This is Bible worship right here. This is Bible worship. That the people praise God with their bodies and God responds with his presence. This is Christianity. People need to know, need to let them know, this is Christianity. This is what God has promised us when we actually praise him. Back to our story of Solomon, 2 2 Chronicles 5. In unison, when the trumpeters and the singers were to make themselves heard with one voice... To praise and to glorify the Lord. Mm, come on. And when, mm, and when they lifted up their voice accompanied by trumpets. Oh, we got the band coming in now. And cymbals. We got Frank coming in. Come on. And instruments of music. We got Mikey and Rebecca coming in. And we got Brandon coming in. Watch out. And when they praised the Lord saying, He indeed is good for His loving kindness is everlasting. Watch this. Then the house of the Lord was filled with cloud so that the priests could not stand to minister because of the cloud for the, watch this, glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Hallelujah. 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 Some days are an acts. 16 day. Can you say amen? Some days your song is lifted up and the cloud of glory comes and shifts the atmosphere and everything changes. Can you say amen? I believe some people today could be an act 16 day. How about you? I believe today, today, come on, today, today, shakaba, today in the presence of God, anything is possible. I hear these excuses from people. Well, I'm just not outgoing. I'm just, I'm just kind of shy. I feel, I feel self-conscious with all that. I just, you know, I'm, I'm, more, I'm more reserved. I'm not, I'm not very demonstrative. The challenge with that, though, is praise is a commandment of the Lord. You're literally telling God, A follower of Jesus isn't really who I am. I'm sorry. I'm just not really wired to be someone who does what the Bible says. It's not really who I am. See, that's not really what we want to be confessing out loud to other people. Why are you doing that? Why, why, Why are you doing that? Well, I'm not really a follower of God, so you understand. No, actually, I don't. Let's get saved now, and then you can become a worshiper, right? Like, I mean, like. I'm not really demonstrative. Well, that's a problem. Let's, let's pray that you get that worked out. Like, like it's not like, like enough of the excuses. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And he said it again. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, right now. Right now, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Psalm 22, 23. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All you descendants of Jacob. Come on, stand in awe of him right now. Just stand right now. We are in awe of you, Jesus. Stand. Come on. We're in awe of you, Jesus. We're in awe of you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let them praise his name with dancing. Let them sing praises with the timbrel. Come on, Mike. Let them praise him with the dancing. Let them praise his with him. With timbrel and lyre. I don't even know what that is, but we do have a keyboard. Let them praise him with dance. Now listen, listen, listen. Come on, now keep clapping. Come on. Now some of you, like... Dancing might be a little bit too much, but you're going to do this. Right? You're going to take a big, bold step of faith, and you're just going to do that. And some of you that this is comfortable, you're going to do this. And some of you that this is comfortable, you might do this. 
And some of you, that's comfortable. You might just, now here's where you're getting radical. That's where you get radical right there. That's where you start getting radical. That's where you start getting radical right there. Let them praise him with dancing. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and lyre. Where are you at, Kelly? Keep playing, Mike. What are you doing? He's like trying to find music and not play at the same time. Listen, listen. Israel learned this lesson. Israel learned this lesson after they, after they dedicated the temple and the glory came. They said, wait a minute, there's something in this. There's power in this praise. There's power. There's power in this praise. Watch this. Watch this. In 2 Corinthians, turn them down one second there if you would. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 20, they, they, were, about to get, they were about to get completely defeated. They, they, were, they were about to get into a war. Give, give me a little bit more. A little more. They, they were about to get defeated. And they said, wait a minute. We got a weapon. We got a weapon that, we, that we're about to use here. And so the Bible says when he consulted the people, he appointed. They're about to go to war, right? Here's what he did. He appointed those who sang to the Lord and those who praised him in holy attire. And they went out before the army. He said, we're going to put our worshipers in the front line. And he told, he told these people on the front line, here's what I need you to do. No, you don't need no sword. You don't need no sword. No, 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 no. You don't, you don't, you don't, need, no, you don't need a knife. No, no. Here's what I need you to do. Give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. And so they went out. Watch this. Watch, this gets better. Watch this. When they began singing and praising, the Lord set ambushes against the sons of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, who had come against Judah. And so they were all defeated. Every enemy was defeated. There might be something in this. There might be something in this. Amen. Shaba. Tell your neighbor, there might be something in this. You might want to praise them. Tell them, you might want to praise them. Tell your neighbor, you might want to praise them. You might want to praise them. He said in Psalm 18.3, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Now, I like praying with people who got problems, but some people just need to just quit complaining about their enemies and just praise the Lord and watch their enemies be defeated. They just praise the Lord and watch the Lord take care of some of their problems. Complain a little less and just start taking it to Jesus and lifting your name in praise and watch what might happen. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Kellyanne, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I feel the Holy Ghost, Mike. Shakaba. Pastor Tracy, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Frank, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Shakaba. Just praying the Holy Ghost. We're about to sing, but just, I mean, I feel the Holy Ghost, Mike. I feel the anointing of the Lord in here right now. Shakaba. Feel the anointing of the Lord in here right now, Mike. Are you releasing it? See, y'all don't even know how anointed Mike is. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. Mike on them keys is like heaven opening over you. You don't even know it. You ain't. You don't even know about that. I see Mike. I see Mike play heaven in the small rooms and big rooms, and I just see him. Just the anointing of God gets on him, and all of a sudden, he can't even sing. He starts singing, heaven opens. I seen it. I seen it. I seen it. Shakaba. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. I'm trying to give you an opportunity to get in on this. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm just giving you an opportunity to get in on this. I'm just welcoming you in. I'm welcoming you into what's about to. I'm welcoming you in to what's about to happen in this room. Shekaba, Laraba. Now you ready? Now, now we're up. What up? What up? Uh. Shakaba. What? Mm. What I'm asking you to do this morning is to take one step. 
one, can, can, hey, we could do one step, right? Yeah. Yeah, one step, yeah, amen, one step? Yeah. Can I get a response, one step? Yeah. I'm talking about one step beyond your comfort zone in worship right now. I don't know what your comfort zone looks like, but I'd like you to get, no, don't stop. I want you to just get a little awkward. I don't know what that looks for you. I don't know what that would look like for you. But if what you've been complaining about God actually did, I don't know, how would, how would you react to that? Somebody up front's going to get something this morning. I just... Now I want you to act like that already happened. And it's about to happen again. As we get about to go into this. Shekaba. Are you ready? You ready, Kelly? Ha! Shaba. Wait, 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 wait. Just pray the Holy Ghost. Come on, we're expecting. Play, Mike. Are you releasing? I just feel the Holy Ghost so strong in this room. I don't want to waste this moment. Get uncomfortable right now. Get a little awkward. Get a little awkward. Get a little awkward. Just get, get a little awkward. Come on. Cause you are good. Come on. You're good. Anybody will be in the lobby. There's room up here at the front for prayer. If you need prayer, come. Um, just come ready to, pre- to praise next week. Amen. Come ready to worship. There's power in your praise. We learned that this morning, that go home with, with knowing that you are leaving with a tool. You're leaving with a weapon. Amen. You're leaving with something that you can bring into your homes. As the, as the scripture said, that they as they praised, the house was filled. Take that home today. Amen. Amen. So we thank you so much for coming. We're so happy you were here. Again, you can stay for worship next service if you'd like. If you need prayer for anything, you can come up to the front. I bless you in Jesus' name. In ministry team, come on up and pray for the folks. Thank you for coming. Let one more clap for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> and for the word this morning. Amen.